This is the Rotoriot Vision 40. It is a 1S or 2S Tiny Whoop with the Walk Snail video system on board. And th this is not a review of the Vision 40 because I can't review it yet because I haven't set it up yet. Before we get into the setup, I wanna show you this product listing from Rotoriot. This is the Fat Shark HD Vision 40 starter kit. And the reason I wanna show you that is because one of the things Rotoriot offers that almost nobody else in FPV offers is the ability to buy a complete starter kit, fully set up, ready to go, literally take it out of the box, turn everything on and go fly. And I point that out because like, that's not what I bought. I just bought the drone and oh, I'm gonna set it up because I already have goggles and I have a controller and I know how to do these things. But if you are interested in buying a complete ready to go kit, Rotoriot is one of the only companies that offers it. There's like a few companies that sell complete kits with like 65 millimeter tiny whoops, but Rotoriot does it for basically all of their ready to fly drones. You can buy a starter kit and they'll just send you everything you need completely configured and ready to go. I think they deserve a little credit for that. Well, the first thing we gotta do is get this thing bound, uh, and the receiver that's on it is Express LRS. In my opinion, Express LRS is the controlling for micros today. The receivers are extremely small, have extremely good range, and there are many choices of flight controllers that even have Express LRS receivers built in. This is not one of those. You can see that there is a Radio Master EP2 receiver right here tied to the back of the canopy. And uh, the way that I like to bind it is to just wait, wait about 30 seconds for it to go into Wi-Fi mode and then enter my binding phrase into the receiver there. I've actually got a video talking about why I prefer to use the binding phrase method instead of a simpler, more traditional method that's like just using a bind button. I've got, uh, instead of telling you about that now, I'll put a link to that video down in the video description if you're interested. Uh, but I'm gonna bind using a bind phrase and I'll do that by looking in my Wi-Fi networks and looking, there it is, the Express LRS RX Wi-Fi network. That's the receiver's Wi-Fi and we can actually connect. And I'll open a web browser and go to the address 10.0.0.1 uh, and here is our Express LRS management page. Uh, it's nice to see that Rotoride is shipping this receiver with firmware 301, at least it's 3.x. It's not the absolute latest firmware, but as long as it's 3.x, we should be fine. You're also gonna need to have your controller, your module, your Express LRS module on 3.x, uh, or it won't bind if it's not on that major version. Uh, to bind them, I'm just gonna go here where it says binding phrase, and I'm gonna type my binding phrase. That's just a, a text string that you make up. You can be whatever you want. Uh, and I'm not going to show you what mine is. I'm going to blur it out. So uh, you can't bind to my quadcopters. Then I'm going to hit save and reboot. Now that it's bound, we will open up Betaflight Configurator and we will connect, connect to the configurator and take a look here. Uh, Rotoride has set up some aux modes. These are the aux modes that I prefer to use. Arm, yes, angle mode, no horizon mode. Horizon mode, just forget it exists. It's my personal opinion. Beeper and flip crash. Uh, this is not my exact aux setup. Uh, so what we can do is we can go to presets and I have a preset on my custom presets repo that I've created that sets up my aux modes for me. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in doing, I have a video about creating your own Betaflight presets repo where you can have your own, well, they just show up here in the configurator as if they were official presets. I'll put a link to that in the video description. It's, it's most people aren't gonna go to the trouble, but if you're, if you're one of those weirdos like me, then you can. I'll just hit right here, aux configuration and pick. And in addition, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna enter my rates. I have particular rates that I like for tiny whoops. And I like to use my 533 rates. Let's just go to the receiver tab and aha, things are not right. Do you see that when I move my throttle, the pitch channel moves? Rotoriot has shipped this with a different channel mapping than I use. That's not a mistake, just different people use different channel mappings. The way we're gonna fix that is right here in the channel map. And what I like to, you can manually rearrange these letters, T-A-E-R-R-E-T-A, -E -E you type them in in whatever order matches your channel mapping. But what I usually do is I just, try the presets and you, I, one of the presets is correct. I can never remember which one. I guess it's the Free Sky Futaba High Tech preset. And now sure enough, throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll, all correct. It's also weird, why did they ship it with telemetry turned off? Express LRS supports telemetry and you totally want it. And if you don't know why you want it, that's okay. 
It's not going to hurt anything for you to turn it on, and maybe someday you will want it. You'll be like, hey, why is this thing not working? And then it'll be because you didn't turn on telemetry. Just turn it on. Rotorite, I don't know why you would ship it with it turned off. That's got to be an oversight. The other thing I check at this stage of setting up a new quad is my endpoints. The channel endpoints should go 1,000 to 2,000 as you move the sticks fully left, right, up, down. This is the kind of thing that you can set once in your radio and it will just basically stay correct forever. Uh, and that's why you don't see me do it when I set up my quads. I'll put a link to it in the video description to how I do that if that's something you're interested in. It is nice to see that Rotoriot is putting a custom PID tune on this. Uh, it just shows they put the work in. Here are my rates. Oh yeah, they've tweaked the shit out of this. Configuration tab. Good. We've got the motor beeper turned on. One of the problems with little quadcopters like this is they don't have a beeper. So if you crash them in the grass and can't find them, it can be hard to find them. There's two things you can do about that. The first one is that you can enable the D-Shot beacon configuration. You turn this option on and this option on. Um, and that makes the motors make a beeping sound, same as when you plug in a battery. Um, however, uh, that, can also, that can sometimes not be loud enough, especially with these little motors. So the other thing you can do is you can just activate turtle mode, arm the quad, and bloop, 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 and make the motor spin, and that'll help you find it. Sometimes that's louder than the beeping. I do notice they're using beacon tone number three, which I hate. Let me show you what I mean. On these little motors, there's not that much difference. It's just a slight change in pitch. I think I remember one of the beacon tones being super annoying on like bigger motors. It was just like, blah, 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 blah. I didn't like it. Maybe that was number two. Is it number five? Oh God. Oh God, yeah, that's it. That, oh, I hate the sound of that one. Although it's, maybe it's easier to hear. Oh, I love it. I love that they have set up the maximum arm angle to 180 so you can arm when the quad is not flat and level. That's good, I always do that. In the power and battery tab, uh, there's a change that we need to make. Uh, Rotorite, I think, is gonna start making these change uh, because I've told them about it and they were like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. The issue is that they ship it with the maximum cell voltage set to 4.3, but this quad will almost always be used with high volt batteries that are charged to 4.35. What that means is that the Betaflight will think that the 4.35 volts is a almost fully discharged 2S battery instead of a 1S battery. Um, we can fix that one of two ways. We can change the maximum cell voltage to 4.4 and then it will correctly read a 4.35 volts 1S as a 1S. The other thing we can do is there's a CLI setting. Let's see if they've changed that CLI setting. What's the setting? Force battery cell count. So you can also do force battery cell count equals one to tell Betaflight that any battery that you plug in is a 1S. Either way it works, but probably the power and battery one is gonna work best for this one since this quadcopter theoretically can sometimes be used with a 2S, although the, the KV of these motors is not optimized for that. Next, we come to the OSD. And unfortunately, they are shipping this with Betaflight 431 on it. Um, I say unfortunately because Betaflight 4.4 has the ability to do high definition OSD when used with digital video transmitters. What that means is that instead of having a 4-3 screen with great big chonkin characters taking up the whole screen, it is a 16-9 wide screen. So if you have widescreen goggles, you can put the OSD elements off to the side and the characters are smaller so you can fit more of them on screen and they don't take up as much of your vision. However, I don't blame Rotoriot for shipping on 4.3. For example, iFlight, is still not shipping their bind and flies on 4.4 because they think there are some issues with 4.4 and they don't quite trust it yet. I do run 4.4 on a lot of my quads and I haven't personally had a problem with it, but I don't blame a company who's selling quads to customers for not being on the absolute cutting edge if it might cause problems. I do wanna set up this OSD. They've got a very simple and rudimentary OSD set up here. What I'm gonna do is go to the presets tab. And again, I'm in my custom repo and I'm gonna load the analog PAL preset, that's what I use for digital video systems that aren't doing high definition. Wait, HD0 on Walksnail, is that, is that gonna work? I don't think that's high def, that's only 4.3. Okay, let's pick that one. <laughs> I don't know, let's find out. All right, let's see here, how's that look? Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's actually bind the goggles and see what it looks like in the goggles. Mm, to bind the goggles, we're gonna plug in Battery here, 
the binding button for the VTX appears to be right here. We're going to wait for the VTX to go green. So there we go. It's blinking. We're going to press the bind button. Got it. And we're going to press the bind button on the goggles. And with a smaller screwdriver, we're going to press the bind button on the goggles. Oh my god. And with a paper clip, we're going to press the bind button on the goggles. And uh, the first thing we see is that the firmware versions do not match. We need to update the firmware. Let's look at what firmware uh, Rotor Riot shipped this on. And 3339.10. Wow! They're shipping it on the latest. That's really cool. They've actually gone to the trouble to manually update this before they shipped it. You'll notice my goggles are on 3237.10, which is one release behind. 3339.10 is technically a beta. Um, and actually, some people have said they've had some performance issues with it, so that's why I haven't updated my goggles yet. But I think we're going to leave this how it is. If you want to know more about this little fan that I use to keep my VTXs from overheating, I made a video about it. It's totally a silly video because, like, it's just a little USB-powered fan, but I actually put a ton of thought into which fan was the best fan to use. I'll put a link in the video description. And the reason I don't want my VTX to overheat and shut down is I really would like to get my OSD sorted out. This is set up for analog. You see, the problem is that to fix that, in the walk snail goggles, we go to settings, display, and we go to OSD position, and we literally move the OSD into the center of the screen. But the problem with that is that when I use one of my other quadcopters with Betaflight 4.4 and the high definition OSD, then it's going to be off to the side of the screen and it's not going to be correct. Looks like there isn't a perfect solution for this. Ideally, the video transmitter should talk to the flight controller, detect whether the uh, flight controller is using a standard definition or high definition canvas, and then communicate to the goggles how to position the OSD appropriately. But that's something for Walksnail to do, and they haven't done it as far as I can tell. Uh, it looks, I could just upgrade the quad to Betaflight 4.4 and use the high definition canvas, but then I'd have to throw out all the configuration Rotorite did, and it wouldn't really be a fair review. That's probably what I would do if I actually owned the quad full time, though. Um, for now, we're going to go into display, we're going to go to OSD position, and we're just going to move the OSD into the roughly center of the screen as best we can, and we're going to go with that. So let's do a final test. Uh, battery plugged in. I wouldn't do this with props on on my desk if this wasn't a tiny little micro quad. Uh, we have uh, video. We have video. Good. Just the arming. Won't arm because I'm plugged into Betaflight. We can fix that easily. Good. Arming works. Turtle mode. Turtle mode. Good. Turtle mode works. Everything works. It's time to take it out and fly it. And uh, I will be putting a link to the review of this quadcopter in a card on screen and uh, in the video description below. And you should totally watch it because this thing is shockingly good and really surprised me with what a 1S digital whoop could be. Uh, I'll see you there.